Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Think Teacher. It's wonderful to be here today. And I'm very excited to present the Unlocking Your Emotional Intelligence webinar. I remember the day that I graduated from the Tell Teachers Training College. I stood on that stage so proud, clutching my new diploma to my chest. And on my back, I had an invisible teacher's backpack. And in that backpack were the skills that my favorite lecturer had given us. She said that in order for us to be good teachers, we needed these skills. We needed an unconditional love of children. And we needed an excellent knowledge of our teaching subject. And lastly, we needed a bag of tricks. Confident that I had these skills in my backpack, I started my teaching. However, it wasn't long before I realized that I actually was missing quite a few things that were essential for teachers to have. And so began my journey of what I called lifelong learning, because I had this insatiable desire to perform optimally in all levels, in my personal and my professional life. I started devouring anything that I could get my hands on, attending courses, reading books, looking for that special thing, that missing link that was going to help me with my teaching. Fortunately, it was this book that I discovered, Daniel Goldman, Emotional Intelligence and Why It Can Matter more than IQ. This was the missing link. This was the key to unlocking my emotional intelligence. To discover that emotions drive people and people drive performance. I had for so long kept my emotions at the door, in the cupboard, suppressed down. I now realized that in order to perform optimally, I needed to have a good understanding of my emotions because we know from research that emotions, when we are in that heightened state of arousal, we go into that fight, flight, freeze, and we cannot perform optimally. Emotional intelligence is a learnable and measurable skill. This was such an aha moment for me because why had I not been taught about emotional intelligence and the importance thereof in my own schooling? And why had I not been taught about it at Teachers Training College? How vital these skills were for children, for teachers, for parents. So how do we define success? What makes somebody successful? So the extensive research that has been um, validated by many scientific studies show that in order to be successful, we need emotional intelligence in our life. And the research that has been done with thousands of people across the board, from business leaders, teachers, musicians, sports people, People that practice emotional intelligence, that learn the skill, or people that are already high in emotional intelligence are more effective in what they do. They have the capacity to generate positive results in their work. They have improved relationships. They can build and maintain strong interpersonal connections. They have good quality of life, the capacity to create true happiness from a life well lived. And they have good, improved well-being. To be able to maintain an optimal energy and functioning is absolutely vital. In the work that I have been doing with teachers over the last couple of years, and even before COVID, it was very clear that teachers might have been highly effective in the classroom, but that they were battling with their relationships and their quality of life and their well-being. And I would often ask, teachers, I do often ask teachers the questions, question, what do you do for you? And it's always, oh, there's no time. 
In teaching, it's 24 seven. How long is a piece of string? And we know that in order to have the balance between, we need to have the balance between these things to perform optimally. We can also see that quality of life and well-being are internal factors and effectiveness and relationship are external. So what is emotional intelligence? Simply put, what is it? How do we define it so that it's easy to understand? So simply put, emotional intelligence is blending the thinking and the feeling to make optimal decisions. We need both the rational and emotional parts of our brain to have that fusion. This is our six seconds definition. So if we are being smart with our feelings, how do we go about that? Simple, it sounds simple, but it requires practice. So to be starting with our know yourself, we have this EQ model and it's all about putting emotional intelligence into practice. We need to be more aware. We need to be more aware of how we are feeling. The emotional data that we are receiving. The data about our emotions and our behavior. So recognizing those patterns. So the blue for me is almost like the sky. So if you are reflecting, how am I feeling? What is actually going on right now? What is triggering me? Is this my pattern? So once we are more aware of what we are feeling, then we can become more intentional. So the red is a little bit stop at the red robot before you react, before you go and think about what is actually going on here? How am I going to assess and use these emotions more effectively? How am I going to navigate? What is my consequential thinking of the way that I'm going to behave? Do I have optimism? Do I have motivation, intrinsic motivation? And then the green is the go. Give yourself. You've been through the no, choose and give. And now you want to move forward and be more purposeful with what you're doing. So this is what we need to do to put it into action. So that we're not on autopilot, because so often if we're not aware of our emotions, we are on autopilot. So about using the six seconds model, you give yourself the chance to be aware of what you're feeling, to be intentional and to be purposeful. So we spoke about the, the skills for, for the success factors, but what about those skills that we need? Say for instance, you want to work on your effectiveness. We're going to talk about four of the EQ competencies, and there are eight in total. So how would you go about being more effective? We need to exercise optimism is one of the things that we can do. And optimism is a learned way of responding to a challenge and an op opportunity. It's about seeing the possibilities and being committed to the solutions. It doesn't mean ignoring the issues. It's looking at the issues and moving forward with a committed to the solutions. So if you want to improve your relationships, you need to look at your empathy. How do we improve our empathy? There are two parts to empathy. It's understanding and it's connecting. To increase empathy begins by seeing others as worthy of true respect as fellow humans, and then opening your mind and your heart to them. You want to improve your quality of life? Let's look at engaging in your intrinsic motivation. When we engage in intrinsic motivation, we tap into the core drivers that make us unique. Rather than reacting and guessing about others, intrinsic motivation is internal, reliable, and full of integrity. If you want to improve your well being, again, it's about one of the competencies, it's about increasing your empathy for self. How much time do you give to yourself? Do you see yourself 
as worthy? Do you respect yourself? Are you opening your heart and your mind to what you need? Or are you ignoring what is going on? This little battery here, are you keeping your battery full? We're so busy charging everything else, but how much time do we have to charge, pay attention to charging our own little battery for our own well being? So, moving forward with the world that has changed on its head, there is a wonderful book that has been written by uh, Yuval. No, Harari, um, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And this was published in 2018, and it couldn't have been more timeless in terms of what the world is facing. And he talks about IQ gets you the job and EQ gets you the promotion. Very important for us as educators to look at this because the World Economic Forum has put emotional intelligence as one of the top skills needed in the workplace. So are we preparing our children enough for this? He talks about change is inevitable. Oh my word, do we not know that word change? Do we not, are we not overwhelmed with what this has brought about? So change for many people, and in fact, for us as human beings, change is difficult because we have this this, our brain goes to, to what it knows, where we feel comfortable. It's part of our survival. So if we are in this change cycle, we can sit in the middle where we are full of fear and frustration and judgment, and we just go round and round and terrified of looking at what that change is bringing for us. But what about if we, 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 we become excited and courageous and curious about that change? What could that bring to us? We need to be able to learn new things. And change and learning new things is what you educators have had to face in the last 18 months, probably more so than any other time in your teaching career. You've had to adapt. You've had to change. So think about where you were or are in that change process in learning new things. Are you frustrated? Are you fearful? Do you have judgment for yourself and for others? Or are you looking at it with courage and curiosity and excitement going forward? We need to preserve our mental health, our mental fitness. We all know about physical fitness and what that does for us in terms of our health, but there's never been a more important time than for us to focus on mental fitness. And the overwhelming statistics in terms of stress and anxiety and burnout, we really need to be looking at this for ourselves as educators and for our, our pupils. We need to have the capacity to handle life's challenges. And this is what emotional intelligence can bring. It gives you that mental fitness. We know that neurons that fire together, wire together. We have this neuroplasticity that we can change the way that we have maybe seen things to improve this mental fitness. And lastly, he talks about, as for educators, we need to be focusing on the four Cs, critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity. Those are the things that are vital for us moving forward. And so we need to think about, is EQ just an add-on or is it an integral part of your school curriculum? And so I would like to ask you, are you curious to find your key? Would you like to unlock your emotional intelligence? Would you like to improve your self-awareness and become more intentional and live a life of more purpose? Well, if you are, I would love to share my EQ key with you. My business is called Equilibrium and I'm Libby Edmonds and I would love you to contact me.
Thank you. Bye-bye.